Sean, I wanted to ask, man, because I know I know you've been around Devin Haney a lot, being out there in Vegas. So uh, talk to us, man, about the about the performance, you know, against against George Cambosos. Yeah, man. Um, hoping to have him on the Portaway podcast soon. Uh, the fight went. The fight went exactly how I thought it would go for, for um, uh, for for Devin. excuse me for uh, for excuse me for Devin. Yeah, I still got no Nito's name in my head. <laughs> um, the fight went exactly the way I thought it would go for Devin. Uh, I I can honestly say it was the way I hoped it would go for for Devin and and, and his team. Um, I think. Bosis was a little underprepared, and I think he'll be more prepared for the rematch. I know? hope so. Um, I hope so. But, but just just sticking with what we saw, we saw a great jab. I think we'll see a better jab in the rematch. To be honest with you, um, because now not not only has not only has Cambosis had a chance to see uh, Haney's speed and. And his and his reach and get a feel for who he is and his presence in the ring, that has a lot to do with how rematches play out. But on the other side of that, of course, we can say the exact same thing for for Devin Haney. So Devin now knows exactly where he needs to be to land that jab. So we'll see a better jab from from Haney in the rematch. Uh, all that being said, I mean everything was there for Devin. The jab was there. The movement was there. The timing was there. His uh, his 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 ability to, to read uh, Cambosis and know what he was gonna throw before he threw it. Yeah, knowing which way he was gonna step before he stepped. Everything was in line for for Devin this first fight. I scored a ten two for Devin. That that and that's I, all. I think I think the widest scorecard might have been nine three. I could yeah. be wrong. Something, something like that. That the 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 best the best part for me of what I really liked about Devin's performance was uh the feints, the way he was able to neutralize George with the feints off uh, off the jab and to set up the jab. He doesn't really yeah. get a lot of credit for feints, and maybe maybe part of the reasons why like you know in other performances I feel like maybe he's underwhelmed at times is because I think he 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 didn't utilize the feints enough. He he would be a, a jab dominant fighter, but he wouldn't necessarily faint his way before the jab or set up off yeah. set up off of it so that would that to me was really encouraging to see from Devin. and i think anybody that watches me one thing i kind of preach on is consistency uh early in the fight you see both guys throwing feints and it was i i had it uh i think after yeah i could be wrong but after five rounds i think i had it three two for Devin. i could yep. be wrong but um uh but 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 both guys were using the feints very well and it was kind of a back and, and forth thing. The consistency of Devin to continue to use the feints and work off the jab is what led him to his victory. Cambosis on the other side of that stopped utilizing his offense. He stopped trying to set up offense and he stopped using using feints. And you know, ultimately, I think that that's what kind of pushed him into the direction of not being able to use offense and playing catch up in the second half of the fight. Yeah, no, that, that sounds about right. And then like, yeah. Um, George, like you mentioned him being underprepared and it kind of brings you to like, a, uh, something I've been talking about on my channel this week is like, uh, when you go from being the, the contender or the guy that, or, or the guy that is the underdog that nobody expects anything of when you, when you finally win those belts, Sean, cause you've been in that position, how hard is it to perform when there's actually like legitimate expectations placed on you going from yeah. contender to champion? Yeah. Um, you see, I won against Devin Alexander and then I fought Pauli Malignaggi. Mm -hmm. And even though I had the belts, the belt, I was still regarded as the underdog because of everything that that uh, that Pauly had done. So it didn't. It my mindset didn't change. I still had the mm -hmm. the, the the chip on my shoulder and the the energy to prove everyone wrong and prove those who believed right. Um, I think it's a little different when people start to applaud. When people start to applaud, you get a little complacent. You get you you feel like things are gonna always go your way, and you may not be able to mentally check in when things don't go your way. So you fast forward, and I have next Kel Brook. Things yeah. aren't going my way, 
for 12 rounds, things aren't going my way. And it never clicked to me mentally that I needed to change. The only thing that I knew was I'm going to continue to do this and eventually it's going to work. It never did. Uh, Cambosis basically went at Dev the exact same way for for 12 rounds. Um, he was a step behind Devin the entire fight, or uh, at the least the last seven rounds, and he had no way of setting up offense. And I think in a rematch, it's going to force him to go back to the drawing board. It's going to it's going to humble him. He's going to realize some things about himself. I think if he's got the right training, he'll be able to correct some errors. We'll get a more exciting rematch. And it's a rematch that while I'm rooting for Devin, mm -hmm. I still think Devin will win the rematch because Devin's going to make some adjustments too. Okay. Well, fair, fair enough. Yeah, because I was, I was very uh, let down. I, thought the, I, I was hoping the thought would be more competitive and – you know, it was one of the bigger letdowns for me because I thought I, I was one of the people that bought into George a little bit. I thought he was one of those guys that when he wins the belt, you know, how they say you get 20 percent better when you become the champion. I, I felt like with his mindset, that's the, that's the kind of guy he was. But but everybody you know, is different, man. You never know what, what what's going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Why is this kept? We don't know what what was it going on in his personal life that may have kept him from doing everything he needed to do on fight night. I'm not making any excuses. All I'm saying is for those, even myself, who was let down by Cambosis, I expected so much more from yeah. Cambosis. <laughs> I expected the first five rounds. I expected that for 12 rounds, and we didn't get that, largely in part because of Devin, or excuse me, Devin uh, Haney. Uh, but with all that being said, I just I got to figure that um, this is that gut check now for Cambosis. And uh, I think we'll get a much more competitive and, and exciting second fight. Yeah, now now we're gonna really, now we're gonna really learn about who George Cambosos uh, truly is now that he's, he's taken a loss in his in his career. Yeah, and then real quick because I, I did bring in into into play his personal life, and again, like not to make any excuses, but you guys really don't know what it takes to be a world champion boxer, and. When you become a world champion boxer, it's like if you didn't already have a world champion mindset and a world champion lifestyle, when things change, you may not know how to adapt to all of them. We can look at, at the tour that Cambosis did. It was it was definitely <laughs> well deserved. Yeah, yeah. The tour, you know, and there was so much that I'm sure he continued to do once he was in Australia and the list goes on. So again, just going back to that gut check and going back to you know, sometimes the things that happen in your personal life be beyond becoming a world champion can affect your 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 performance on excuse me on fight night. Yeah, no, absolutely. I know one thing he changed in his preparation for sure is that uh because he did his last five or six training camps down here in South Florida, because he's not he he he's a train not too far from where I live. And yeah, yeah, uh yeah, no. He built a he built a gym. I remember I asked him like after he beat Haney. I, I saw him at the MGM Grand when I was with Sean to tell, and uh, he was there at the Haney Jojo Diaz uh, press conference. And I asked him. Yeah. I said, when, "When you come back to South Florida, I want an interview or whatever." And he was like, "Well, I'm not coming back to South Florida. I'm building a gym in Australia." And then yeah. and so he did change that. I'm not gonna say that's the reason why he lost, but it is yeah. a diff. There was a difference in this fight as opposed to the last four or five fights. So you gotta consider it. Yeah, I was gonna say here. Last, last thing we say on this, but when you when you consider for me everything, there's a time and a place. I mean, it's it's a saying, and we all know that it sounds cliche, but there's a time and a place. Was your first fight as a world champion? Was that the right time for you to have your own place, or should no. you have continued to do what got you there to get you through that moment, and then start to adapt into having your own place? And, and 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 being able to do things in, in in your own space and things like that you know so maybe in the rematch he comes back to south florida honestly i can't imagine he does that he, he's built a place <laughs> in australia it's a nice so place too now he's yeah i was gonna say i think now he's got to live with that decision but i think now he'll be he'll be more tuned in and and, and he's gonna write some some wrongs I, I i i can i can guarantee you that okay okay